Speaking of the power brokers, you mentioned Eddie Hearn, and um, I saw on the internet Eddie Hearn responded to you after. We're going to talk about the Parker Chisora fight. What an awesome he, heavyweight he, he fight. He responded was. to what? I didn't and even know. Eddie Hearn, you sent out a tweet that said, um, give these men both a fight of the night bonus, like a UFC style. And Eddie Hearn said, oh, uh, did some, one of the reporters read it to Eddie Hearn. He said, what, what did he say? He said, yeah, they said you should give, Teddy said you should give them both the bonus. He said, oh, that's very nice of Teddy. If he could just send me the money. I'd be happy to give it to them. I'd be glad uh, to send it to you, Eddie. I'll send you half. You come up with the other half. <laughs> I think they deserve it uh, that much. Uh, listen, Eddie is the man over there. He's the man in Europe. Uh, you know, he might be coming the man over here too. But yeah. um, he, he's the man over there. He definitely is. He's the youngest of all the guys. Um, he's in a great position, you know. And listen, give him. I give him the credit. But I also give the fighters the credit. And uh, those fighters, they deserve the credit. We'll talk about it more later. But that's just sort of Parker. When you see that, they deserve a bonus. And, and Eddie Hearn is not the only guy I'm pointing that at. I pointed at Aram. I pointed at all of them, you know. And, and, I'm, sure, and I'm sure Eddie Hearn's not the only one who has that uh, answer. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure all the other ones would say that's very nice of Teddy. Teddy, give it to him. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Let's get into pa Parker Chisora. Unbelievable, unbelievably entertaining heavyweight fight. It's why the heavyweights get paid what they do. Big guys throwing big shots. Joseph Parker seemed to be outclassing him all night. But Chisora is a, I mean, can you be, t I don't know that you can be tougher than Chisora. He took shot after shot. I think he got knocked down three times and he kept coming. And um, Joseph Parker three got times in three, three times in three different rounds. Yep. Keep, keep that keep that in your mind. Put a note <laughs> know, on that because we're going to come back to that. We're going to yep. come back to that. I'm going to let you finish. But yeah. three that's three 10 eight rounds, three, okay? 10, eight rounds. Do the do the math, you beautiful people across the pond. That's all. <laughs> Your math is the same. <laughs> right? It is the same across the pond. Right? Right? <laughs> yep. Right? Eight is eight, ten is ten, two and two is four. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Go ahead, go on, go on. I'm sorry. And Parker, Parker took some big shots and just kept putting it on Derek all night. And to your point, this was oh my god, they had it set up perfectly to rob Parker. There was no way Parker was winning that fight if it went to the scorecards, unless of course he knocks him down so many times that they couldn't rob him. And thank God for Parker. Thank God. No, it went to the scorecards. Kind of did go to the I, scorecards. I, I, I know, but my point is, the only way Parker wins this is if he knocks him down multiple times in multiple rounds and even oh, then, oh, yeah, even yeah, yeah, then he barely squeaks out of there with the win. Well, two points. Two points on one judge. I mean, come on. Talk Again, do the math over there. You beautiful <laughs> people. I love you. But the math, it's the same math system, right? Unless Listen. they change it. And I don't know. The fact that the right man got the decision is going to allow these judges to have this decision swept their scorecard swept under the rug. But we shouldn't not allow here, it. We not here, allow Ken. It to be swept under the rug. We should assume that they robbed this guy of his win. He beat the crap out of Derek, and 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 still these judges wanted to give that they did everything they could, everything they could. Like I, I just don't. We know how shine they could. a light. We shine a a, a broad large light on everything on everyone and if you're hiding somewhere in a corner we 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 get the light with more of a finer you know sort of tube to get into that corner and we're going to shine a light that's that's what we feel we are part of our job is to do shine a light on the areas that need a light shine and try to bring the truth out in this business in all aspects all areas and no matter what and that's that was terrible what Ken's talking about. If I'm Joseph Parker, I don't fight with that, with whoever put that fight together, the promotion, the organization, the the the, um, the governing bodies. I don't fight for them anymore. Dude, Joseph Parker, they wanted to rob you. They did everything they could to steal that fight from you. And I love Derek Chisora. I think Derek Chisora, will pro Derek Chisora probably heard the cards and was like, what in the hell? What fight are they watching? Classy These guys man. Chisora, Chisora is everything you want in a, a warrior. He's a classy man, too.
That being said, if you're going to rob a bank, these judges are the people to do it with. They don't give a crap about what the, the perception of the public has of them. They'll do anything they can to get help you rob that bank. So if you're going to rob a bank, call those judges. They're the guys. They're, 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 they're your partners in crime. They have no integrity. That that Those scorecards were laughable. I mean, wh- how can you even look was yourself one in of the, the names? Was one of the names of the judge of Dillinger? <laughs> Charles Manson. <laughs> was Dellinger one of them? The Unabomber was one of them. Charles Manson. I mean, come on, guys. Like, have some integrity. Be dependable. Have some, like, have some pride. Be able to go home and be like, yeah, look, I know, I know they wanted us to give it to Chisora, but Joseph beat the crap out of him, so I judged it honestly. Not, I did my best to rob him for you guys, but sorry, you just put it on him too bad. Anyway, how'd you like the fight in general before we keep ripping the judges apart? Uh, look, it was a rematch from seven months ago. Seven months ago, Chisora fought a split decision with him. Um, this time, it was, you know, as much as they tried to make it a split decision, it wasn't close. It was a fight that could have been stopped in some spots. You could argue that it was close. Well, not even argue. You could see it was close to being stopped in a few spots, which is it just walked away almost almost you started to wonder is he out of it like is he you know is is he uh you know is he is he semi-conscious uh the way he was walking but he was just walking get distance and then he got himself together and he did what he does which is go to war no wonder that his fight name is war because that's what this guy does he's a war horse he's a war horse but uh He's a he's a war horse who's thirty seven years old now, and he's been doing this a long time. <laughs> this is what he does. He does war, you know. He doesn't do treaties. He doesn't uh, do amnesty. He doesn't do uh, surrenders. He does war. He does war, and there's a price to pay when you do war. And it comes to a time when you know you have to be retired from war i think he should be retired after this fight and given a bonus or given something but in all seriousness you got to be careful because this guy should have a parade for him i know he never won a title he never beat the guys at the next level i i put it all out there the good the bad the in between not the bad the honest <laughs> there's nothing bad about a guy like Shusor. He's never won at the next level. He's been very competitive there, but he's never won at the next level. But he's fought everybody, titles, everything. And he's always given everything. He's the guy I talk about when I fight for the fighters and for the sport. And where I got in trouble on ESPN over 25 years for saying things. Where I would go out there and say things about the sport, the corruption part of it, and try to fix it. And I would get angry. Because I would get angry because of men like Shusora, where they go in the ring and they come out of it with less of themselves. That's Shusora. Not less of his dignity. That's always going to be intact. Not less of his resolve. That's what he is. That's what he's practiced his whole life, to have resolve, to behave like a man. But less physically. And it catches up to you. I mean, he's a guy that, I hope to God the commissions are aware. I hope to God his corner people and they get together and they, they think about retirement now. He's had a great career. He's given you beautiful fans. I joke with you, I love you so over the course of the pond. He's given you everything and more you could ask for. He's given you thrills. He's given you victories. And in defeat, he's given you every ounce of himself where you never really thought he lost in some cases, because he gave so much of himself. He he deserves a parade. He deserves to be applauded for being one of the true great warriors from anywhere, but definitely to represent the United Kingdom. He he um he's at the end of the road where somebody's gotta look out for a warrior like this and say, Okay, it's time to walk off to the sunset with your head held high, with applause, and with thank yous, thank you for what you've given us, all those thrills, and all those moments. And I'll tell you one other thing I talk about all the time, those lessons of how to behave like a man, those lessons of never to give up, those lessons of how, no matter how dismal it looks, no matter how terrible it looks, 
no matter how hopeless it looks, to always try to find a way, to never give up, to never give in, to never make excuses. That's you. You've taught us that. And if you didn't teach us that, for the ones that were getting a little tired and you know a little winded, you reminded us that it's always our choice, no matter how difficult things are. It's always our choice of how we'll behave, what we'll do when the moment comes. And you always made the right choice. You always made the right choice, Mr. Chrysora. Mr. Chrysora. You always made the right choice, always. You always behaved the way we wish and hope that you would behave. And maybe the way we wish we could behave when we're in those situations. Boy, you are tremendous. And then you go into the locker room, just like you did after the Usyk fight, and just which was very, very competitive too. And just like you did, you tested Usyk. And you might have been the reason why Usyk beat Joshua for the heavyweight title. You got him ready. You got him ready for what he needed to be ready for. And you went into his locker room after the fight, and you went in to Parker's locker room with food. <laughs> you just had a war with him and you brought food and you went in there and you ate like two gentlemen like two warriors that respect each other that appreciate what they just went through what they just shared in that ring what they just risked in that ring you are a tough man and you are a classy man and you're a good man and I just I wish you nothing but luck in whatever you do. I hope that you do retire because I think with all that punishment, all those punches you've taken, I always say you don't judge a fight chronologically that he's 37. You judge him by how long he's been fighting, how many punches he's been taking for that length of time. And because of that, you have to give you what you've given us. The appreciation, the respect, the consideration, the care to think about what's best for you. You've given us you've given us care about how you fought, how you behaved, you know, all of that. You've given us everything. We need to the people around you, the commissions who make a decision when you can fight next. They all need to think about that. And give you what you've given us. Just the care, the appreciation for what should be next for you. And I, I'll tell you, Parker was the best I've ever seen him. I've never seen him this aggressive, but this smart at the same time. Usually he uses a side. He's a big, strong man, and he's a tough man, and he's a strong man. I'll say it again. And he usually stays on the outside, uses a jab, and kind of plays it safe and plays it careful and, you know, moves a little bit, uses his legs, and and stays outside looking for the one-two. And, you know, he fights that way. But this time he fought the way I think he was always supposed to fight. And maybe it's got something to do with his trainer. I don't know how long the trainer's been with him. Andy Lee, who used was a former champion, uh, I believe a junior middleweight. Uh, it was either junior middleweight, middleweight or super middleweight. I'm not sure. But from Ireland, he was an Olympian. I, I actually caught his fights for NBC in the Olympics when he when he represented Ireland. And uh, I caught some of his fights on ESPN and the pros. But he's a trainer now, and I think he's doing a good job. And it looked like he did a good job for Parker, I got to tell you, because, again, that's the best I ever saw Parker, mentally and physically, technically. He didn't run. He didn't move, just move to survive and, you know, just just win that way. Um he didn't just stay on the outside and play it safe, but he but he played it smart though. But he played it right. I thought for fights like this with a style of Trezora, he should grab the floor. He should grab the floor, keep range, keep dictate control of range, be able to keep the guy at the end of his punches and make him pay it for a price. Like I always said on ESPN, make him pay a price for the real estate you want. You want three feet of real estate? It's going to cost you four punches. And that's what he did. He 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 kept him outside by setting his feet, 
by keeping him at the end of his punches, knowing that range, knowing where that was, he made Chisora have to travel. We know Chisora has to get close. He's shorter armed. He's a shorter guy. He he bends for. He comes in like a Joe Frazier to a certain extent. You know he has to get close to be at his best. And Parker understood that. He had a game plan for that. But this time, he did it by grabbing the floor, controlling range, but being set to punch and making him pay for a price to get close. Making him go through a bad neighborhood to get to him and mugging him on the way to get through that bad neighborhood. And he chose the right punches, the uppercut, because he understood Chazor would bend forward. He could catch him uppercut, and he did. He hurt him with uppercuts. And also straight right hands on the outside. Where he, he caught right hands were important for Parker, straight right hands on the outside. And they were important for Chazor. The only difference is Chazor throws the round ones, the looping ones. But he did a great job, great fight plan, great strategy, but great preparation. He was ready to grab the floor, Parker, and be set to punch, not just move away, but punch and then keep that distance, move back, you know, move back another four inches and set up again. The guy comes in, uh, Chisora comes in three inches, you move back six, but you set to punch and you catch him and you use those extra inches to your advantage. And he did that and he did it beautifully. And then he went and fought, I always talk about geography. Whoever owns the geography that best suits their talents and their abilities is going to be winning the fight uh, for the most part. And then what did he do? He went into the geography, Parker did, of Chisora on the inside and he handled that well because his punches were a little bit more uh, cleaner, sharper, less fat on him, uh, you know, more definitive, just... He he was able to land with the uppercut inside, short punches inside. Uh, he was able to hold his own, if not get the better, on the inside, which is Chisora's area. That's Chisora's territory. So, again, the best i ever seen him. That's the park I want to see. Yeah, using that big, big bone, strong, you know, uh, physique and abilities that he was given and that his genetics gave him. He used him a lot better than he did in the past when I saw him doing a poor man's imitation of Ali. And that's an exaggeration. He was never Ali trying to move around like that. But you get the idea. You get what I'm trying to say. And um, he was terrific. But again, I come back to Chisora. You were terrific, as you always are, in your behavior. In your behavior. And again, the lessons that you teach us no matter how tough things get, it's your choice how you behave. It's your choice what you do. And boy, oh boy, you did what you've always done, Mr. Trezora. You fought like a champion. You fought like you behaved like a champion, like a warrior. And you might never have won that title, that world title. As I said earlier, you came up short, just a little short sometimes, but you never came up short in the most important area of behavior, of behaving like a champion, behaving like a warrior, behaving like a man. Well, perfect summation, Teddy. Um, Joseph Parker. And those judges, shame on you, judges. One judge I had can't a 14, let that go. One judge had a 14-12. He gave when I up. heard that score, you know what I said? <laughs> I said, holy crumpets. <laughs> One judge, Holy had a, crumpets. one judge gave Chisora six rounds and only scored two of the ten knocked the two of the three knocked out rounds. I want to make one suggestion for those judges. Really, really, I'm always trying to make boxing better. So are you? We're, we're always trying to help. Get them cat scans. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe some way vicariously uh, osmosis. Maybe some way they they're too close to the ring, and you know sometimes they say if you're too close to a microwave oven, you're taking some of those rays. They could be damaging. I don't know. Maybe you're too close to the ring, and you're taking some of those punches in a way that we haven't understood yet. We haven't gotten the science to understand yet, and and you need a CAT scan to see if you're being damaged. 
If you're being damaged in that sort of way, get cat scan for these judges. One of the okay? judges. One of the judges scored one of the knockdown rounds. And Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn. Listen, Eddie. I'll pay for the cat scans. I'll pay for that. <laughs> the cat scans. I can. I can handle, Eddie. I'm not quite in your league with, uh, you know, with your bank account, but I. I can handle the. I handle the cat scans. One of the judges gave uh, one of the knockdown rounds ten nine for Parker, and for the record, all three knockdowns were like legit. Knocked on your ass, knocked Oh, downs. yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, that's only a 10, 10 9. I didn't see Chisora win any one sided rounds and then he got knocked down. And okay, maybe you could say 10 9 since Chisora put it on him and then just got a flash knockdown. Parker knocked him on his ass every single one of those knockdowns. 